Assalamu alaikum dear learners. I hope you all are well and enjoying your health. I was just thinking, how can you ask someone to do something for you in English without sounding rude? I mean, we've been trying to learn English for a long time. Do you have any idea how can we do this? I think they don't have any idea. And I think you must have any idea. Yes, I do have. It's very important, I think, in uh, any language learning, it is very hard to ask people, for example, how to reach some place, how to go some, uh, somewhere, because instructions are always difficult. Right. And there are different ways. For example, we can use imperatives. Imperatives are uh, structures which uh, make use of orders or requests. Right. Uh, for example, we can, uh, you know, there are like uh, ways to f come here, stand up, but these are a bit rude, they sound yeah. rude. So different ways are there. We can make our uh, speech polite by using let's or, for example, we can say shall. Look at, for example, if I say be quiet, mm -hmm. how can we make it polite, you know? Please. Please be quiet. Be quiet. And one word here, quiet, Q-U-I-E-T, should not be pronounced quiet. Quiet. Because quiet is something else. For example, it's quite well. That mm -hmm. is Q-U-I-T-E, remember. Q-U-I-E-T is quiet. Quiet. In speech silent. And uh, listen to me carefully. Again, it is, you know, uh, because it can sound rude to give direct orders, especially if you're talking to an adult, we soften the imperative tone mm -hmm. by using let's or please. Please. It's very important because uh, we should know in our social context. We must not sound rude. Yes. And uh, sometimes even among our, ourselves, among the people who are of our own age group, even we can then, also use we, we must not use that harsh tone. Yes. Among friends even. You're right. We use models. I hope you rem remember models we did, like shall, should, can, could. We use these models to change the mood of a sentence. For example, you should help her is more polite than help her. I know. Models can be used to change something that sounds rude into something that is polite. For example, please open the door sounds better than open the door. Yes, but here, please open the door. Here's no model, but it is polite. But please, will you open the door? Right. Yes. Polite. Look at some more examples. Uh, for example, we can use could. Could you make me some tea? Could you make me some tea? Make me a cup of tea. Yes, make me <laughs> a cup of tea. That is uh, rude. And can you come here, please? Again, using please. The use of please. And you know, we use Mehrwani Farmake or Bara Mehrwani in Urdu too. So, in all languages, I think they use these words uh, which change the tone of uh, the sentence. We also use will. Will you shut the door, please? Would you wait here until the doctor is ready for you? Right. And if you listen to these instructions on um, at airports or at railway stations, you will see in English. I mean, if you listen to those instructions, they're very polite, very formal. And these instructions or the way we ask someone to do something for us in a polite way, these are the basic ethics or the manners of a language. Otherwise, if we don't sound polite, we must ruin our image. Someone must have an opinion about you that you don't know the ethics, how to talk to elders. Yes, or right. You're right. Because language is sort of manifestation of what a person is from the inside. I know. And we people from Pakistan, we are quite judgmental. If you're not talking politely with me, I must say this person is very rude. rude. I'm not going to talk to the, him mm, anymore. You're right. Uh, so instead of using an imperative form, you can use a phrase instead. Here are some common ways of uh, phrasing an order. For example, you can say, would you mind possibly moving your car? It is parked right in front of mine. Mm -hmm. If the same thing is said in a harsh tone, there might be a quarrel I or maybe know. a fight even I in Pakistan, know. physical fight. 
I was hoping you could spare me a few minutes this morning. Or we can also say, do you think you could do this photocopying for me? Very polite. This is I such think. a polite sentence. Yes, and I've uh, listened to many cassettes and watched different documentaries. I think English people, they are really very much careful regarding using uh, language. I know. They use polite words just to convey uh, uh, that they are really very polite people. And as a nation, they are very polite. If you have a couple of minutes to spare, the office needs tidying up. Or, I'd like you to file this correspondence for me. I want you to finish this by tomorrow. Again, using polite words and conveying the message. You can use sequencing words to make instructions clear. You know sequences were sequencing words, first, second, like this. I'll give some example. Uh, for example, firstly, make sure the appliance appliance, for example, washing machine, mm -hmm. is disconnected. Secondly, open the back with a screwdriver, then mm -hmm. carefully pull out the two black cables. Something I would like to ask you. Sure. You will have to tell me and tell all the learners. Right. Uh, how to make a cup of tea? Firstly, we take a cup of water. Good. Secondly, we boil the water. Mm -hmm. Then we put a tea bag. Right. And a bit of milk. Mm -hmm. Lastly, if sugar is required. It is Dutpati, I think. I hope I passed my exam. <laughs> Good, you have. And, Thank you. Uh, it, is, it is important to, like, that's why some people, most of them, uh, in the beginning, they don't know how to use, for example, a card, how to load balance. And that is why at the back of each card, instructions, you know, are, given instructions there. are given because people commit mistakes. And I remember when in the beginning, these telephone booths, they were uh, installed at different places in different markets. People didn't know how to use them. Mm. You know, there were slot people who were first supposed to insert the card and then they had to press certain buttons and then they had to pick the receiver, wait for some time for the instruction by the lady or the man, mm -hmm. and then they had to go further. Mm -hmm. But people simply, they got confused, they were nervous. This, many of them, did, I even I didn't use it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But now I understand, okay, follow instructions, that thing is quite easy. I know. Here is some, uh, I would like to give you some, uh, some useful vocabulary for asking directions in English. Uh, I can say, for example, how do I get to your office? Get to your office, I, instead of saying reach. That is possible too. Can you tell me the best way of getting to your office? Or what is the quickest way of getting to your office? Where are you exactly? Mm -hmm. Getting is a word very commonly used for reaching. Right. How can I get to that place? Mm -hmm. Or will you be coming by car or by train? You know, he's not using here. Uh, I'm not saying will you come. Will you be coming? Mm -hmm. ING form in future sounds more polite. I know. These are slight shades. We don't know sometimes, but if you're talking to an Englishman, he might judge. Okay, the person knows the language. He's using, will you be coming? Or for example, if I say, will you be staying tomorrow? Mm -hmm. The other way is, will are you, you stay or are you going to stay? They might be direct. Mm -hmm. And this is less direct. Right. Uh, some more examples. It's much easier if you take the train. Which hotel are you staying at? And the tone should be rising, right. not falling, because it is a question form. Now, I would like to use some more words uh, like next, front, to convey these instructions. For example, you're talking to somebody on telephone and you're standing near a supermarket. You've got different ways. You can say, we're next to the supermarket. You can say, we're standing in front of the supermarket and we are standing across the road near the supermarket or we are around the corner near the supermarket. Different ways. Or come off the motorway or come off the highway at junction. Off here has to be with double F, come off. And this off is a preposition here that uh, is used quite technically and you should, if you know, you can correct many of your mistakes. For example, he fell off the wall. Pakistan is usually the use from. He fell from the wall. Off again with double F. Come off the wall and fallen off the wall. So here come off the motorway, you know, leaving motorway or highway. By the way, do you know the difference between motorway and highway? No? I'll tell you. Highway and motorway, they are two different words for the same thing. That is a big, large, wide road. And the Britishers they use the word motorway and the Americans say highway. And then uh, some more examples. It's signposted uh, Faisalabad. There's a signpost that is giving you the direction of the city. Follow the signs 
uh, these signs to reach so and so place. And some more examples, there is a one-way system in the center of town. Sometimes you're traveling, you know, there are some milestones uh, beside the road. You can use them. And if you look at the people in the West, they're very much used to using those sign uh, ports, those uh, landmarks, because they are the proper guides to reach some place. But in our country, we don't use these, uh, whether they're sign, traffic signs, tra traffic signals, or uh, some signboards or milestones are very important. Uh, how to give instruction regarding those signboards? You can say, for example, you will see a large sign or uh, roundabout, and you read that, there will be the name mentioned, and from there you can judge how many kilometers away it is, and then you can reach there. Or on your left, you will see an industrial center. From there, you can reach the hotel. Or on your right, you will see a hospital, and on the top, this sort of writing is there. You can simply see the color, blue color, and then from there, you can reach your friend's home. Or when you're going straight, if you go, you will see on the right side, there is a police station after about five miles. From there, turn right, and you will reach there. Or go past a petrol station, you will reach your friend's home. Sir, I would like to ask you something. What if I say I have to instruct someone regarding the uh, rules or instructions regarding the transports, how to get into the transport, how mm. to get off? That's, uh, there are so many mistakes committed by non ready speakers here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason learners is L1, mother tongue influence. Right. For example, I've heard many people saying, I got off from the bus. Mm -hmm. That As sounds just, a little wrong. Uh, yeah, I've just told you that off here, is spelled with double F. Mm -hmm. So get off the bus. We cannot say get off from, from the, the bus because it is translation from Urdu language. What if I say bus get say. into the bus? Yes, I would like to explain this thing. But before I explain, I must tell you that in these instructions, the role of prepositions is very cr crucial. Prepositions are the words like in, on, at, above, across, all these things. I know, things. it's very confusing at times. Yes, and remember in one of the programs we discussed the difference between above and over. I know. Above is something that is fixed. I can see a Stationary, fan. Stationary, something yeah, that is not moving. That is not moving. I can see a fan above my head, or you can see ceiling above your head. If you just raise your, head, your eyes, you can see something above your head. And over is something moving from one place to the other. For example, Birds I can see a bird moving from uh, over, over the building, or he threw a stone over the, the building. Right. Propositions are important. Now, coming back to your question, use of transportation, definitely. There are people who commit mistakes. No, I am one of them. Yes, look at, look at, look at, I think everybody does. Look at large transport, public transport, which are, uh, which are very big. For example, bus, train, airplane, and big boats. Right. We use the word on for them. Right, I didn't know that. I, you know? And I think most of you didn't know that. He's traveling on the bus. Right. I'm sitting on the bus. I'm sitting on the aeroplane, but this doesn't mean he's sitting on the roof of the bus. Now here the thing becomes confusing because in Pakistani context or many third world countries, what happens? People travel on the roof Oof. of the bus. So if you say he's sitting on the bus, in Pindi it might mean he's sitting <laughs> on the roof. Right. But in English it means you're sitting in the bus, but they use on the bus. He's sitting on the aeroplane. And it reminds me of uh, something very horrendous, something horrible. A boy, few months ago, you know, he planned to travel uh, by plane, but not inside the plane, by sitting somewhere near the wing, uh, near the, the wheels. Oh my God. Somehow he managed to get to that place, and when the plane took off, he was there, and somewhere, uh, some place of Lahore, he fell off there. Oh my and he died on the spot. So on is used for big public transport. Now compare he's sitting on the bus with he's sitting in the car. Right. You, you just quoted a horrible, I mean, a, such a horrible incident. It, 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 it did happen. Sorry. And talking about chairs, we all use chairs, don't you? I mean, we all we do. use chairs. Uh, like if chair has got arms, mm -hmm. two arms, you sit in the in chair. In the chair. And if the chair has no arms. And you're sitting on the chair. Right. But, you know, in my university, there are chairs with one arm. What do we say? We are sitting at the chair. They, they, they are only con confused. And you use the word at again. At is a very important word in English. If you 
want someone to see you at some place which you can't define properly. For example, a bus stop, railway station, lobby of a hotel, you would say, I would be, for example, at the bus stop. Means you will not be inside some boundary, you will not be uh, at some fixed place, you might be around that place right. approximately. I'll be at the hotel means inside the hotel, in the lobby, maybe in the lawn, near the main uh, entrance. Mm -hmm. At is used in those uh, situations. And at also reminds me of uh, the difference between at and in. If I say he works at a bank and he works in a bank, there's a difference, you know? And when I seriously have no idea about yes. the difference. At a bank means we are referring to the activity, the bank activity, As for example, taking the checks, collecting checks, and then okay. paying money. Okay. For example, if I say, he is at the mosque, and what sort of activities go, uh, activities go on in a mosque, you know? Be Worshipping God, right. reciting the Holy Quran. If I say, he is at the mosque means, he is either saying prayer, reciting the Holy Quran, or sitting, worshipping God. Mm -hmm. But if I say, he is in the mosque means? He is praying. No. At the mosque means praying. In the mosque, maybe, we are talking about the physical boundaries of mosque. He might be there, maybe, painting the walls. Right. Manning the furniture there. Okay. So, in and at, that is one of the differences. Do you mean the task is defined? The task when is When activity is related to that, that building. School means studying and teaching. Bank means helping the customers. Mosque means worshipping. So, at, when at is used, our focus is on the activity. But when you talk about bank as a building, Mosque as a concrete thing, as a building, and school as a building, we use in. Okay, if I ask a question, hmm. I am going to reach your place by bus. Is yes, this a is, right statement? Yes, you're using means by bus, by air, by land, by sea, but you'll be sitting on the bus. Okay. Got it? Now the idea is <laughs> but pretty don't much sit clear. on the roof. <laughs> okay. Uh, sometimes uh, some students uh, simply, you know, they stun you. They ask uh, such a question that, no, you can't uh, answer that. It is not related with that thing, but you know, once a student asked me... A general question. Uh, yes, he said, Sir, ek moti aurat intazar kar rahi hai. How will you translate into English? I said, a fat lady is waiting. He said, that's a very long sentence. I said, then, he said, very simple. I said, what is that? He said, motivating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, the same boy, you know, he was very naughty. He said, uh, Ek larki ye niche khadi hai. Ek larki niche khadi hai. He was using the word niche. I said, the, girl was standing uh, uh, the young girl is standing there I mean, on the first floor or maybe uh, there beneath some tree like this, you know. He said, very Understa simple. Understanding. Misunderstanding. <laughs> Misunderstanding, right. right. So, that is a pretty easy way to uh, translate, but a very easy way of losing marks. Losing I marks think. in exam, right. These uh, words across, along, they are also important uh, because people sometimes they don't know that how to use them. Across is when you are crossing the road, for example. He was walking across the road when he was hit by a motorbike. And he was walking along using the length of the road mm -hmm. when he was hit by the bicycle. Right. And you, if you want to instruct somebody, you're, for example, standing here, and you, you want to tell somebody to reach some place, you would say, start walking along the road, mm -hmm. and you will see me after some time. Mm -hmm. uh, it means the use of across, along, under, beneath, above, over. These are very important in instructing people. And I hope you, you, you have got the idea. You must learn these words they use. For example, you should know beneath, under, below. They've got almost the same meaning. Mm -hmm. but Sometimes add, yes, sometimes add, for example, and on, they look similar, but they've got different meaning. Add is used, for example, when a surface is touching another surface, like my hand is on my, my left hand is on my right, right hand, hand, and my right hand is under my left, left hand. hand. But when it moves like this, it is here, my left hand is above my right, right hand. hand, and my right hand is below my left. left. And if it is moving like, I can say my left hand is moving over my right hand. My right hand. Right. So how was it? It is pretty much interesting but confusing. So I would suggest you kindly write it down and make your own example so that the idea comes more clear to you.
Sure. I hope you enjoyed the topic, but I would repeat kindly note it down for yourself and read some. Can you just suggest some books for them? For they can like I mean any pick any grammar book. There there are portions for uh, uh, for, for prepositions. They can learn them. And if you want to let's say have uh, some good Urdu translation as well, there are many books written by Pakistani authors where you can like have translation and then English or uh, Urdu structures there and then change into English. But I think you should uh, instead of book you should focus on English uh, documentaries or uh, these dialogues on cassettes practically you should practically experience how people instruct you politely call over a helpline and just notice how people instruct you such a polite way that is another thing that and there are two options like for example if you if you want to talk to somebody uh, like ex telephone exchange ptcl they would say you want instructions in english or urdu press for example two for english press it and then you will get the idea even if You're you right. if you call uh, if you talk to a representative or the customer service officer they are so polite I myself, I, ha I do have an experience of working in a call center. Mm -hmm. They used to deduct our marks. Our calls were, they were like, quality was measured. And if I, for example, if my call was not that polite, there was proper standard. And if I am deviating from that standard, my marks were deducted and you're my right. salary as well. You're right. Talking about call center, mm -hmm. you work there. And uh, regarding that, I would like to give my learners some final tips. Remember, if you're giving directions over the phone, you have to speak slowly to allow the other person to write things down. You know, sometimes people are writing. Check that the other person has understood. And if you're speaking face to face with someone, use your hands to show left, right or straight. Mm -hmm. And use please. The word please must be used when you ask someone to give you directions. It is polite and will normally get you what you want. Exactly. That's it. Yes, it was pretty helpful. And I hope you'll all keep this in your mind and you'll try to be polite. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.